Welcome to Toy Hill Studio. My name is Kendall Kessler. Last time I was trying to imitate the fresco method of painting just for something different. That is when an artist paints wet paint into wet plaster and the painting becomes wall as much as it is painting. Well, I didn't like what I came up with at all. And of course I didn't have plaster. I was just using paint and painting into paint to try to get that effect. And it was oil paint and I couldn't change it. And I thought, oh, this is just not working out at all. It's not anything I want to put on my portfolio. So I decided to do something else. And I just did a short YouTube. But uh, I looked at it after it dried and I thought, well, maybe I can do something with this. But there's not enough time on a YouTube to use oil paint. So I think I'm just going to go over with some acrylics and see if I can get what I was after. I was trying to do kind of a wildflower scene and when that wasn't working out, it looked so awful, I decided, well, I'll make an abstract. And uh, I thought that's not working out at all. So I'm going to see what I can do with some acrylics and see if I can get something in a reasonable amount of time. As I said, I don't like to have real, real long YouTubes and I don't really want to do the time lapse. So let me see if I can go over it. You can go over a, um, oil paint with acrylics. You got to be careful how you do it and all. And it will stick if the oil paint's not, you know, sitting up there in huge amounts. And I'm just going to kind of put in some little dabs of flowers. I'm going to keep this very loose. As I've talked about before, there's all levels of abstraction in art. And I like to work from things that I see. And then I like to elaborate with my own personal reactions to color. And none of this makes any sense. I've had a number of people say they would really like me to explain painting to them and do some techniques and all. And I'm trying to figure out how to do that. Uh, I've been doing this for such a long time that it doesn't make any sense. It may have made some sense when I started out, but not now. It's just a very, very strange process that I'm doing right now that has to do with learning so much about the paint and reacting to it. And as I've said before, I love this quote by Houdini. Anybody can do what I do with 30 years of practice. Yeah, I've been doing this for such a long time. There are all kinds of jigs and jags I'm doing right now that don't make any sense. But I was thinking I could like show a palette, explain how that works since I'm primarily an oil painter and just show some very basic things, um, a little bit of mixing or something. I, I will try to come up with something since I am getting that request, and it's a nice request. So try to do that. See, I, I'm at the, I know I shouldn't say the speed of light because that's very pompous, but it's really true. At the speed of light, I'm reacting to this. Or very, very fast, let's say that. Very quickly, I am reacting to this as I put it down to get what I want, to get an impression of a field of flowers, but also it's a reaction to just the way the paint looks, which is why if you watched my YouTube, you know I also do lots of abstracts, because to me it's all the same, and I know that that sounds so weird. I know when I was young and my teacher said that to me, I thought, what are you talking about? An abstract is nothing like what we call a representational painting. And now I see exactly what that teacher was saying. Exactly. It's all a matter of paint in a closed area, how it looks as paint. And to me, it's just as fascinating when it looks like something as when it's music without words. Oh, I'm already starting to like this. So that's good. <laughs> Since I had such a hard time last time, I'm starting to really see that there's a good possibility that I could come up with something here. I'm just working on the land right here. I'm going to get rid of those circular weird things because that's not going to work with wildflowers. Unless I've got serpents in the air. <laughs> that's certainly not it. I could turn them into birds or something by now. Now I like the way already, I like the way there's kind of a slant right through here in terms of design. So that's always nice. I also like the way I'm getting more used to talking on YouTube, which is great. I used to really stutter. Well, not so much stutter, but just get, you know, oh, what am I saying next? And just getting all, all messed up. But I feel a lot more comfortable about it. I know I shouldn't be uncomfortable talking to a camera, but it's still, it's a quite an experience. Lots of times I record my piano music 
and our church is finally opening back up, so I'll go back to being paid to play the piano. I am a professional musician, too. And lots of times I record it, because I want to make sure it sounds pretty good. And it's, um, I can't believe that I actually get uptight when I do that, because there's nobody around. <laughs> and I still get uptight when I'm recording my music. Okay, I'm getting a right, really nice, really nice effect through there, which I really am happy with, which is great. And I think what I'm going to do is have a tree right through here to pull that area up through there and give kind of a circular effect. So I'm going to work on that next. And I've only gone five minutes, so I am happy. Very, very happy. Especially since I need to get a crate together, pretty big size crate together, to mail out a painting to a patron in Mississippi who is very happy with it. I have a really good um, method for doing commissions. I may have spoken about this before, but since I work in the traditional thin to thick method in oil paint, I send them the first layer, which looks a file of the first layer, which looks very much like the way it's going to turn out, and ask them if that's what you want. And when they say that, I add all the other layers. And I do require a fee, small fee for that first layer. I mean, you know, my time and my materials. And then if they decide that they are happy with it, I require the whole balance. And my patron this time is really happy. He's real thrilled. He thinks it's beautiful, and I'm going to be real pleased to mail it out to him. Boy, last time I mailed one, it took a longer than I was supposed to. They told me it's going to be there next Tuesday, and God, it was a week or so later. So watch out for the mail. It's not always working out right. Yeah, see, I like that, because then that brings it over this way, and uh, it starts to get a, a very nice design quality. And... And this is the sort of thing I can keep going back into over and over again, but I'm going to get it pretty close to done and hopefully, hopefully done actually, so that I don't have to be working on this this afternoon. Got the cardboard. You have to uh, mo immobilize artwork, so it has to be, you have to cut out cardboard four sheets and immobilize it in the first one and then put it in the second one. And I always put instructions on the box. I always worry that people are going to be, not be careful how they open it and then hurt the artwork. It's real tricky. Okay, all right. Boy, I really, I'm really pleased. I, I was really worried. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is get a bigger brush and do something with the sky. I'm going to come back to all this. You can see, in a way, that I'm really, even with the, with the acrylics, I'm still doing layers. I always do layers. But with the acrylics, it's drying very quickly. So I can get back to it. And I got I always have a hair dryer in case I need to use it. Wow. Oh, I like that. Getting a kind of a sunset -y effect into the sky area. Got to get rid of those serpents. Or turn them into birds. <laughs> Don't think I'll turn them into birds. Let's see, as I'm doing this, I'm thinking, well, it might be nice just to really have the sun in the middle of that, but I need to wait for it to dry. And I'm going to put this around the tree. And again, it doesn't make any sense. I'm reacting to it. I'm relying on all those years of knowing how to handle paint to be able to do this. I know when I first started out, it was completely different. Completely different from what I do now. It's all these years of practice, and I'm much happier now, too. Uh, I look back on some that I did a very long time ago, I think, oh, God. Which, you know... Artists, writers, all, all people do that. They look back and think, see something they do when they're young and think, ooh. Now, some of them I do when I was young, I th I'm very pleased with. They're in my portfolio. So, you never know. It really is, um, I know it's going to sound kind of strange, but art really is a crapshoot. It really is. You, you never know. And you just have to learn to live with it or don't do it. Because you do have to just kind of move on and not let it drive you nuts. Because it could. Now, if I were doing one uh, very formulaic thing where I know exactly what I'm doing and I know exactly what's going to happen each time, then uh, and that'd be different. To me, that'd be very boring. You know, some artists do that, and that's certainly nothing wrong with it, but some artists do just take a subject matter and precisely copy it, and that's it. They're happy, I guess. I, I could not ever be happy that way. I'm always inventing, always changing, even though you see a similarity between all my works. It's still always inventing, always changing. 
Okay, now what I want to do now is get back in to the landscape part of it, especially right through here, and just kind of give a suggestion of the grass and all. Let it go into the sky area so that you see where there's just kind of a ridge here. Oh, I didn't want that to go like that. Oh, well, I can always fix that. I wanted to have more of a slant. Well, a little late now, but I can always fix it. Keep going over and over. It's a great thing about paint. There's so much you can do to modify it. And yeah, it's only 10 minutes. I'm going to really, really fool with this one for a while. It takes a lot of time. I am working on a larger size canvas than I usually do, and so I've got a lot more to cover. But I'm moving fast, moving real fast. Really like the way the flowers are coming out. I do want to add more to that. But right now I feel like the because I took that up so high, I need to bring the tree over a little bit, make it a little more dominant. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Yeah, sure. Well, if you paint, it does. It's always an arrangement, and regardless of what it looks like. And I see that as much as I see what I'm painting. Um, if you've studied art at all, you hear the words composition and contrast and all this stuff, texture. If you paint, yeah, then you start to understand what artists are talking about. Okay, now I'm going to make that more visible as a tree. And I'm going to do more with the trunk area. Make it more substantial. I need more, need more contrast there. I'm mean, trying to think of what I'm going to do to do a demo. I mean, you know, I'm these are just showing you me painting and really experimenting because I don't normally go out on a limb here. I'm not trying to be funny, but I don't usually do that in my own work. I mean, I'm always learning and it's always changing and everything, but there's there's more of a definite plan when I work on my own stuff. On YouTube, I like to really just really go wild. And most of the time it turns out really good. That one last time was no good. Just thought this is not at all me in any way, no way, not putting that up. Okay, that's starting to do some things that I really like. Some having the tree to the side, I think is working very nice. It's just kind of pulling this area and then this area is going to come out even stronger. Okay, I'll do a little more with the flowers. I'll get a smaller brush and get more of them in. Always love to do wildflower paintings. It's a beautiful thing, period. I mean, I don't know anybody that doesn't like wildflowers, but from the artist's point of view, it's also just such a wonderful myriad of color. And as I've said many times, I am a colorist. That's the most important part of the work to me. Boy, I really, I didn't think I was going to have this much success today. So this is really nice. I was worried that I was going to have to uh, abort again. But I think it's coming along very well. I don't know if I'm, don't know if I'm going to have to work some more on it, but it's only been 13 minutes. So I think I'll work a little more here and hopefully be done. I might just right after I turn this off, I might do a little more so that I can get working on my crate this afternoon and get that painting out. Any, if you, any of you out there are interested, I do commissions and I've never had anybody complain. It's usually just lots and lots of compliments. Right now, I'm working on a figure, which I do like to do. I, would ne I don't want to do that on YouTube. Good grief. People are very hard, take a lot of time, certainly don't do that here. But um, I've had some problems at first with the spacing and all, but now it's starting to come along and I'm real pleased. Okay. Let's see, I like what happened here, even though I kind of a little bit messed up my space, so I had to do more to the tree. But um, I, I really like the, uh, the way the, the weeds and things or whatever are coming across in a really nice kind of lyrical way. See, there's another thing. Lyrical, sure. <laughs> well, again, if you painted, or you might, you know, I don't want to talk down 
certainly could be people out here who know exactly what I'm talking about, but there is a lyricism to write what happened right there that I really like. And see, that's what I do all the time, as I've explained before, a balance between control and accident. If it were all very, very controlled, to me it would be a boring process, and I think it tends to look boring. If it were all accident, it looks like I have no control and it's just nothing but playing around. So I balance between those two. I have an idea, but then I also just let things happen, and then I react to those as I go. Okay, hmm. I might just stop it there. And I know what you're seeing is not as intense as what I'm seeing, but it's going to be. I always include a file that shows the accurate painting in the thumbnail. And I might just stop it there and just work on a little bit offline and be done. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to click on the link at the top of the description to see the final painting. Also, there's a link to my Etsy shop, to my blog, to my website, and other sites.